Hey everyone, this is Mr. D for Mr. D Math, and this is Prime Numbers, the gateway to algebra and beyond. And what if you see up there where you see algebra, calculus, fractions, radicals, factoring, sequences, geometry, trigonometry, those are just a few of the different kinds of topics in math where prime numbers show up over and over and over again. So what you may not know is that I have been working in math for almost 30 years, and in that 30 years I've been always looking at what is it that a young person needs to know when they're in grade two that would help them get to grade five. To grade 7 to grade 8 to grade 12 and college and beyond. Well, what I was looking at and I was working with, and typically I work with middle school and high school students, I write math courses from pre-algebra all the way up through pre-calculus, I found that prime numbers found their way in every single course. So I decided to build it into all of my courses that I work with and create for students. And students love it because they can see the patterns and they can see how prime numbers work all the way through. So let's get started. First of all, I'm going to ask you this. This is the boring part. Let's go through some definitions, then we'll get to the fun part about working these out. What is a prime number? So you may say, well, I know what a prime number is. A prime number is a number that can only be divided by one in itself. And if you said that, you're exactly right. A prime number is a number that can only be divided by one and itself, but notice the word and. It must be both, not just one or the other. Huh, what's that mean? Well, let's look at the prime numbers from one to 100. What are they? So what numbers from one to 100 are prime numbers? Well, here they are. 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17, 19, 23, 29, 31, 37, 41, 43, 47, 53, 59, 61, 67, 71, 73, 79, 83, 89, and 97. Do you notice something's missing though at the beginning? I said what numbers from 1 to 100 are prime numbers, and it started at 2. Why is that? So you might be asking yourself this question, well, why isn't 1 a prime number? Well, there's a reason for that. 1 isn't a prime number because it cannot be multiplied by 1 and itself as it is itself. It cannot be both. There's no way to do it. It's just 1 times 1 is 1. That's all we got. So because it doesn't fit the definition of being be able to divide it by 1 and itself, we just say that 1's not a prime number. We start with 2, where we say the factors of 2 are 2 and 1. Speaking of a factor, what's a factor? Hmm. Well, a factor is a divisible part of a number or expression. And divisible just means that something can be divided with no remainder at all. All right, well, let's check it out then. If I know what a prime number is and I know what a factor is, then what is a prime factor? Well, a prime factor is simply this. It's a divisible part of a number, the factor, that can only be divided by one in itself, the prime factor. Makes sense. Okay, great. By the way, that's how I define things when I'm doing math. Let's just get the words and what they mean and come up with a definition that works for everybody. All right, let's use some prime factors. Check this out. The prime factors are 48. Now, a lot of people, I say, well, what multiplies and makes 48? And they say, well, I know 6 times 8 or 4 times 12 and whatnot, but let's work with 6 times 8. That's a pretty common one. So think about 48. 48 is 6 times 8. You might have made these factor trees before. By the way, you're saying, well, Mr. D, this is prime numbers, the gateway to algebra and beyond. I did this in my fifth grade class. Well, wait till you see where we're going. Let's just make sure everybody's on the same page with working with these prime factors. So I know that 6 times 8 is 48, and I know that 6 is 2 times 3, and 8 is 2 times 4. But I can keep going. 2, 3, and 2 are prime numbers, but not the 4. Take it one more level so that the 4 is 2 times 2. So I have 2 times 3 times 2 times 2 times 2. There we go. Now I'm going to write those in order from 2's first and then the 3, and it'll look like this. 4 2's and a 3. 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 3. Now we're going to play a little game, Mr. D game, called the number 8 game. So if I say 8, you say 2 times 2 times 2. All right, just kind of remember, here we go. The number 8, oh, let me hear you. 2 times 2 times 2. Okay, good. If you hear me say 2 times 2 times 2, you just say 8. All right, hang in there. See if you can play the game with me. The number 8 game. Oh, there it is again. 2 times 2 times 2. All right, it's your turn. Find the prime factors of 36. Pause the video here. Come back when you're done. Did you find it? 2 times 2 times 3 times 3. You might have started with 4 times 9, 6 times 6. 2 times 18, or maybe 3 times 12. Not sure which ones you started with, but whatever they are, they all end up at 2 times 2 times 3 times 3. Speaking of the way that I just organized all that, I call those factor families. What do I mean by that? Well, you can use prime factors to create numbers that multiply to make a composite number. Composite number? Well, what's a composite number? Well, thanks for asking. A composite number is this. A composite number is a number that can be divided by more than one in itself. Oh, well, now I know what a composite number is as well. So check this out. We're going to use the prime factors to find all the positive integers that multiply and make 48. So notice I'm talking about positive integers and not negative integers. We'll work with negative integers when we get to algebra 
up. But let's check it out right now for positive integers that multiply and make 48. Now remember, I started with my prime factors, which were four twos and a three. We'll check that out. If I use all the numbers, all four twos and a three, and there you can see right there they are, that makes my 48. By the way, you can see right there, there's eight times six, there's 48. One times 48 is 48. You may have been asked to do this before by your mom, if you're a young person, you say, or mom, maybe you remember doing this back when you first learned about writing out factor families. You said, oh yeah, I got to go 1 and 48 and 2 and 24 and 4 and 12 and 6 and 8. And I hope I didn't leave any out, but we did because we left out 3 and 16. And you're like, what? Where'd that come from? Well, let me show you. I'm not going to list them out at all. I'm going to make them. What does that mean? Well, I used 1 and 48. I'm always going to start with 1 in the number, but watch what I'm going to do now. The number that comes after 1 is 2. So watch what I'm going to do. You see, there's a 2 right there, but look what's left over. 2 and 24 is 48. Why is that? Well, if I take the 2, that's my red 2 right here, and I write down the other numbers that are still there, 3 2s and a 3. Oh, yeah, 2 times 2 times 2. You say 8. 8 times 3 is 24. Ta-da, 2 times 24 is 48. Let's keep going. Is there a 3 in my list? There is. Oh, well, then 3 must be a factor of 48, which it is. But 3 times what makes 48? Well, 3 and the remaining numbers. 3 is my number and the other remaining numbers, 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, or 2 times 2 times 2, 8 times 2, which is 16. Hmm, what well, comes after 3? Well, 4 comes after 3. Hey, I can make a 4 with two twos. Well, let's do that. So there it is, 4, my two twos, that makes my 4, and what's left over? Two twos and a 3, or 4 times 3, 6 times 2, however you want to say it, but that comes out to 12, and 4 times 12 is 48. Now, the next thing after 4 is a 5. But 5 is a prime number, and there's no 5s in my list. So 5 doesn't go into 48, which you probably knew already. Let's kind of see what comes after 5. How about 6? Well, yeah, I can make a 6. How do I do that? Well, we already did that. We used the 6 and the 8 when we started, 2 times 3 and 2 times 2 times 2. Your job is to start to see, can you see the numbers inside of the numbers? So you see, here's my factor family of 48. 1 and 48, 2 and 24, 3 and 16, 4 and 12, and 6 and 8. And there they all are. And notice the way the factors go together, the red and the blue all of the factors are being used and I can find all of the numbers. All right, well, let's let you have a chance and check it out and find the factor family of 36. Try it and let's see how you do. I'll pause the video. Actually, you're going to pause the video and I'll be back when you come back. Aha, uh -huh. did you find it? 1 and 36, 2 and 18, 3 and 12, 4 and 9, 6 and 6. I hope you did, and you can see how the factors go together. Prime factors to find a greatest common factor. What? You can do that? And some of you say, yeah, well, I already know how to do that. But let's see what we're going to do with it once we get the answer. Check it out. The greatest common factor means greatest being the biggest, common being the same, factor being the divisible part of a number. So when I talk about the greatest common factor, I mean the biggest, same, divisible part of a number. What does that mean? Well, let's look. Let's find the greatest common factor of 36 and 48. Watch my 36 and 48. Here they come. I already know my 36 is 2 times 2 times 3 times 3, and my 48 is 4 twos and a 3. There it is again. But what I'm saying is the greatest same factors are divisible part of the number. What's the most things they have in common? Well, if you notice, they both have 2s and 3s, but what do they have in common? The most that's the same. Well, the most that's the same is there's two twos, and the most number of 3s they have in common is 1 3. So there's my greatest common factors. I look at the common prime factors, two twos and a three. By the way, look and see what you see there. That's my two twos and a three, which is 12. And 12 times three is 36. Why did I say that? Well, there's my 12 and there's my three. Over here's my 12 and times the four that's left over makes my 48. I can start to see how all these numbers go together. It's kind of cool. So check it out. Two times two times three is 12 and I can see how it works together then. My 12 times three, which is 36 and 12 times four, which is 48. So how about you guys try this one? How about the greatest common factor of 28 and 42? Pause the video, work it out, come back when you got it done. Okay, welcome back. How did you do? Did you get this? Did you get 2 times 2 times 7 and 2 times 3 times 7? Noticing that they have a 2 and a 7 in common, which is 14. And many people get stuck with this when they say, no, no, the greatest common factor is 7. Well, actually, the greatest common factor is 14. 14 divides into 28 two times. I can see it. 14 divides into 42 three times. I can see it. Okay, well, let's reduce some fractions. Talking about reducing fractions, what do you mean by that? Well, let's look at this. What if you had to reduce the fraction 36 over 48? Now, moms, think about this. If you're telling your young people how to do that, you would say, reduce the fraction 36 over 48, which means you would tell your young people, okay, find the biggest number that divides into both and then divide it by that number and that's how you reduce fractions. And young people go, oh my gosh, that sounds like a lot of work. I'm gonna have to go in and find the greatest common factor? Yeah. 
yeah, that's right. So now you're thinking, oh my gosh, we're having this great conversation about greatest common factors. Well, we're not gonna do that. So check this out. Reduce 36 over 48 using factors? Yes, watch this. If I look at 36, two times two times three times three, 48, two times two times two times two times three, what do they have in common? What we just did, our greatest common factor. They have two twos and a three in common. So what do you do? Well, every time there's a two over a two or a three over a three, cross it out because two over two makes one. That division sign, that fraction bar is a division sign. Check it out, two over two crossed out. Two over two crossed out, three over three crossed out. what they have in common? Two twos and a three, which is what? 12, but look what's left over in the numerator. There's a three left over. In the denominator, there's two twos, which is gonna make what? Cross out what they have in common, write down what's left over, and you see it's three over two times two, which is three over four. Fraction reduced, and did you notice? I didn't divide by anything. I didn't say what number was the biggest number that went into that and divided by it. Nope, I didn't do that, and you don't have to either. Just write out the prime factors, cross out what they have in common, write down what's left over, and what you crossed out is the greatest common factor. And there we are. And you can see exactly how that works. My 12 times three makes my 36. My 12 times four gets me back to 48, just like we worked it out. All right, now you're going like, well, that's kind of cool. But why was I saying about the how do you cannot know what the biggest number is? Now what? Uh-oh, it's got letters in there. Oh my goodness. Well, how do you know what's bigger, A or B? A's and B's are variables. We don't know which one's bigger. We don't know what A is. We don't know what B is. So you can't say A is bigger than B or B is bigger than A. We just don't know. But we can still do the same process write out the factors, cross out what they have in common, write down what's left over, and you might be saying to yourself, wait a minute, that looks like advanced algebra. Yeah, but guess what? We're gonna do the same thing. The gateway to algebra and beyond, here we go. Let's look at the factors of 36, a to the third power, b to the second power. By the way, if you haven't seen this little three or two before, those are my exponents, and it looks like this. 36, my two twos and two threes, but now my a to the third power, as you see right here, means a times a times a b to the second power means b times b, and my 48 is two times two times two times two times three, and then one a and three b's. Notice here, the a doesn't have a little exponent, this is one of them, and then three b's. Well, what do they have in common? Oh, well, I can see they've got twos in common, twos in common, three, and a, and two b's. That's the common factors we cross out. By the way, that's the greatest common factor, but what's left over? Well, what's left over is a three on the top and an a and another a on the top, which is three a to the second power on the bottom, two twos and a b, which is four b. What did we cross out? Well, we crossed out two twos, a three, an a, and two b's, which is what we call the greatest common factor. Now, you may be looking at this and going like, wait a minute, are you saying that I just reduced that fraction? I am saying you just reduced that fraction. It reduced to this, three a squared over four b, right here. Now, you may be saying, well, I don't even really know what just happened there, but I know that I know how to do it. How about that? That's the way it works when you start using prime numbers that you can start to see how things are happening. You'll learn more about this when you get to your advanced algebra classes, but let's keep going. Matter of fact, it's your turn. Check it out. Reduce 28 a to the third b to the third over 42 a to the fourth b to the second. Use factors and find the greatest common factor. And all of a sudden now I'm giving you some words and you're going like, well, that just looks really difficult, but you can probably do it. Matter of fact, pause the video, check it out, come back and see how you did. Okay, so if you checked it out and you wrote it all out, your 28 was two twos and a seven, three A's, three B's, that goes on the top, 42, a two, a three, and a seven, four A's and two B's on the bottom, cross out what they had in common, you would cross out a two and a seven, an A, an A, an A, and a B, and a B. But if you notice what's left on the top, what's still left on the top is this. There was one two left on the top and one B left on the top. On the bottom, there was a three and an A. What'd you cross out? A two, a seven, three A's, two B's, 14, A to the third, B to the second. Ta-da! the greatest common factor has been found and you didn't have to do any more work than just reduce the fraction to get the information. Hopefully this is starting to catch on and you want to see more. Good, let's do more. Prime factors can be used for adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing fractions as well, whether it's arithmetic or algebraic. What? You can use prime factors for adding fractions? You can. Let's check it out. So first of all, if I say to you 5 12 plus 1 18 and I say, what do you do first? And some of you say, well, I just close the book and take a break because I don't like doing fractions. Well, maybe some of you do that, but let's check it out. Most of you would say, well, what do you do first? Well, you have to get a common denominator and you have to find one. All right, well, that would be the first thing. Why? Well, if you've seen any of my other presentations, you know the only way to add things is that they have to be the same. We count things that are the same. So the only way I can count those is if I have the same kind of denominator so I know what I'm counting. So what am I counting? Well, I don't know yet because they're not the same. So what would you do first? Well, you would find a common denominator. That's what you would do. 
But that's not what I would do because I'm not even going to find a common denominator. Here's what I'm going to do instead. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make one. Oh my goodness, what do you mean make one? Well, I mean this, I'm going to make one. I'm going to take my 12 and write two times two times three. And I'm going to take my 18, two times three times three, and I'm going to make a common denominator. Well, how do you do that? Well, you just say to yourself, what do they need so they can look the same? What's needed to make the denominators look the same? Well, that's pretty easy, check it out. If you've got two twos and a three on the left, side and a two and two threes on the right side, what do they need to look the same? Well, the one on the left needs a three, the one on the right needs a two. If they each had those other numbers, they would be the same. Two twos and two threes for both. Oh yeah, whatever you do to the bottom, you do to the top. So I gave the first fraction a three, but whatever I do to the bottom, I do to the top. I multiply both top and bottom by three, and I multiply top and bottom by two on the right side. And do you notice what just happened? We are going to make a new common denominator, and I haven't even thought about what it is yet. I just went in and made it. We made the equivalent fractions. So take a look down here. Whether you say two times two is four, and three times three is nine, and four times nine is 36, or you come over here and you go two times three is six, and three times two is six, and six times six is 36, doesn't matter. You're gonna get the same one either time, and now it's easy. 15 over 36, how'd I get 15? Well, I just multiplied the top, five times three. How'd I get two over 36? I just multiplied the top, one times two, and then I see that 15 over 36 plus 2 over 36 is 17 over 36. No problem at all. By the way, do you notice? I didn't count by the biggest denominator until I found one they both went into, which is what you guys used to say. You don't have to do that anymore. Just make one. All right, let's take a look at square roots. Square root, what's that? Well, the square root of 25 is five. Now, some people say, but I've never heard of that before. Well, if you haven't heard of it, no problem. You can find out more about it when you meet with me in pre-algebra and beyond. But if you have heard of it, you probably say, yeah, yeah, 20 square root of 25 is five. And if I ask you why, you would say, well, that's easy because five times five is 25. When I say, why is it five? You say, because five times five is 25. Okay, well, that's what most people say. So I agree. So since I agree and you agree, I made up a rule a radical rule, not just any kind of rule, but Mr. D's radical rule. Two on the inside make one on the outside. Now, you know why I call it a radical rule? I call it a radical rule because when you see our little symbol here, the square root sign, it's actually called a radical. In this case, it's a square root, but you can have third roots and fourth roots and fifth roots and so on. They're called radicals. So my radical rule, if you see two on the inside, like two fives, just write one on the outside without the square root sign. Well, what about the square root of 50? Well, let's find out. You'll never guess what I'm gonna do. Oh, you did guess? Prime factors, you're right. Check it out. The prime factors of 50 are five times 10 or five times five times two. Maybe you said 25 times two, same thing. But what? Two on the inside make one on the outside. What does that mean? Well, two fives on the inside make one five on the outside, but the two, well, that doesn't get to come out. Sorry two, you stay in and you get this. Five times the square root of two, the radical has been simplified. You want a little advanced thing on this? Let's keep going. What letters? Are you kidding? I can't do the square root of 48, a to the second, b to the third. You can if you write down the prime factors. Here they are. Two times two times two times two times three times a times a times b times b times b. Write out the factors. Two on the inside, make one on the outside. Side. Do you notice there's two twos, comes out of two. Another two twos, take out another two. There's two A's, take out an A. There's two B's, take out a B. And look what's left over. What's left over is a three and a B. And look at my answer. Two twos, the A and the B came out. It makes four AB. What stayed inside? The three and B. And that's it, the square root of three B. Multiplied by four times AB. That's it. That's all there is to it. By the way, are you ready for this? If you put a little three in here and we did cube roots, we just changed the rule to three on the inside, make one on the outside. Want to do a fourth root? You got it four on the inside, make one on the outside, and so on. Advanced algebra at your service. Okay, you guys check it out here. Ready? Pause the video, find the square root of 28, a to the third, b to the fourth. Put the video back on when you've completed this. How many of you got this? You took out your two, you took out an a and two b's, and you still have a seven and an a left over, which is two ab squared times the square root of seven a. Nice work. All right, well, let's check out sequences. Sequences, what are you talking about? I'm talking about sequences. A pattern. What pattern do you see in this sequence? 1, 8, 27, 64, 125, 216. You may be saying, well, I don't see a sequence at all. Check this out. You can look at how they're changing, or you can do what? Yes, you guessed it. Look at the prime factors. Now, the one is a little bit misleading, but eight, say it, 
2 times 2 times 2. Oh, there's the pattern already. 27 is 9 times 3, or 3 times 3 times 3. Look at the pattern. Here's my pattern. 8 is 2 times 2 times 2. 27 is 3 times 3 times 3. Do you see that? And 1, I can write as 1 times 1 times 1, no matter what. It's the pattern, the number, to the third power, or times itself by 3 times. My pattern is n to the third power. Well, how about this one? 5, 20, 45, 80, 125, 180. And you may be looking at it going like, well, wait a minute, that's not like something times itself. Like, how do you get a 5? Hmm, well, don't start with the 5. Look at the factors of 20. Look at the factors of 45, and you'll see the pattern. You only need 2 to start to notice patterns. Once you see patterns, look and see, does it fit all the time? This time it will. Check it out. If you look at the 20 as 2 times 2 times 5, and 45, like 9 times 5, or 3 times 3 times 5, you can see it. I can put the 1s back in for my first one, so I can see 1 times 1 times 5, 2 times 2 times 5, 3 times 3 times 5, 4 times 4 times 5. The 5 is what we call a constant. Every time there's a 5, which means that we write the pattern as 5 times the number, whatever we're on, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and so on, to the second power. Okay, well, check it out. Try this out. 11, 49, 99, 176, 275, 396. Look for the pattern in this sequence. Did you find it? Here it is, 11 n to the second power. Aha, uh -huh. not bad. Hopefully you're seeing how this works and working with prime factors. Now there's lots of other ways to determine patterns and sequences. However, prime numbers are a great place to start. Ah, uh, by the way, let's talk about multiplying two digit numbers by 11. Think of it like a bonus here. 11 times 25, quick and easy. When you've got a two digit number multiplied by 11, check this out. You take the two five, like the 25, the digits, the two and the five, and you add them together. Then you take what you got, that answer seven, and you stick it in the middle of the two and the five, and ta-da, there you go, 275. Now there's more to that, I'll let you guys play with it, or you can email me right through the course, as you can see. Click the little email box and send me an email, and I'll be happy to talk to you if you got more questions about anything you've seen here today. So thank you for watching and viewing Prime Numbers, the Gateway to Algebra and Beyond. I'm Mr. D from Mr. D Math, and I hope you found this educational and you had a little bit of fun, but most importantly, that you learned something new today you didn't know before. I hope you check out more of my sessions, and feel free to contact me at mrdmath.com. See you next time.